It is the NBA offseason, but there's so much to talk about. I'm talking just, I don't even know where to begin. Welcome to the Spurs Roundtable, powered by Project Spurs. I am your host, Jeff Garcia, and I got a very large crew with me to talk about everything the Spurs and a little bit of the NBA has been going on since, uh, well, the Spurs have walked off with the title. Joining me today is Steven Anderson from Project Spurs, Paul Garcia of Project Spurs, and our special guest, Paul Castro. The I'm, I'm special today? Wow. Yeah, you're very you're special. You're yeah. special, yeah. man. Not anymore. <laughs> well, he is the, uh, if you don't know who he is, you probably recognize the voice. He is the Spurs Spanish radio play-by-play, -play, so definitely tune into him during the uh, season to hear uh, his call. And I love your, your call for it every time at Manu is at three. Or Manu Tres. Uno, dos, tres. That's Genobre. it, right yeah. there. Well, before we talk about <laughs> Manu and him and FIBA, we're going to talk about a little bit about the big news. Becky Hammond. That's right. The WNBA legend is now making history in the NBA. The first ever NBA paid female assistant coach. And right off the bat, we were talking about this before the show kicked off. And we had a little back and forth, especially <laughs> with Steven. Steven, you followed the Silver Star. I'm sorry, the Stars, I'm sorry, throughout the entire season. What are your thoughts? You know, the, the Stars have... Well, not only did the season just end, but I mean, with Becky Hammond, she's been a leader on and off the court, uh, getting a chance to interview her in the locker room. She is the same person you see on the court, off the court, uh, very level-headed, good basketball IQ. She knows the plays in and out, and she even makes many references to the Spurs right. when talking about certain plays that the Stars run. Now, you're talking about the basketball IQ. Uh, her, that's what everybody's been talking about, Paul, is her basketball IQ is off the charts. Will it mesh now in the NBA uh, coaching against with one of the best teams? Well, you know, last year, guys, she she flew with us a couple times for a few games, so I knew something was up. So I knew Coach Pop like the, and the Spurs were up to something you know, special. Uh, and I, wasn't, I didn't know they were going to actually hire us as a coach, but it's like, great, though. Uh, it's a great move for the NBA, for the Spurs, for, for Coach Pop. He's going to lead her to a, a new place in her career because she's established here already. Uh, people around the WNBA know who she is. They like her a lot. She's very smart, talented. And I think what she'll bring to the table is a new perspective to what they, they did somewhere else. Well, she did somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So I think for her, it's a step in a direction where she can go to college as a coach or maybe <coughs> even in Europe. Mm -hmm. And who knows, maybe in, a, in, a, in the NBA one of these days. Yeah, that's a good question, Paul. You know, will some, some move like this, whether it be Becky or some other woman in the future, become one day an NBA head coach? I, I, think, I think that it possibly could. I mean, you just have to look at the organization. The Spurs are obviously are the organization to do this because, you know, if a player does try to get out of line, you know, they got to answer to Pop if, if they do that. I think this is the right organization for that. I don't know how soon it would be that a, that a, that a woman will become a head coach in the NBA, but I definitely think this is, this is a move that, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't matter about, you know, your, your, your gender. It's, it's about your, your, your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, she talks about how she knew all, all the Spurs' plays, you know, their, their system. They run a lot of the state stuff with, like how they do with the Austin Toros and the, with the Stars. And so, you know, if there's, if there's a team out there, there's a lot of GMs who, are, who, are, who, who may be willing to in the future. You know, if, if, they, if they need a coach, they're going to look outside of just that gender aspect and look actually to the, to the basketball mind. And so Becky would be a, a great candidate for that, I think. You, you know, Stephen, you know, throughout, well, once the hire was announced, mm -hmm. one of the big things she said is basketball is basketball. Right. It is. Basketball is basketball, no matter if it's men or women. I know Paul, not this Paul, but that Paul over there, he disagrees. I said it was different. <laughs> it, it is different, but I mean, you know, it, 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 it is because it's women and men, but the basketball is the same, whether it's men or women. A, a lot of the same things that the men run, the women do as well. Well, well how is it different, though? Well, you know what? Uh, being around the Spurs for 20, I'm going on 21 years, I can tell you that the male, it's like everything else. You have your male side, you have your female side. This a line separation. Because working with women, is, you have to behave differently, talk differently, act differently than you do with your own, own gender. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm thinking that it'll be, a, a, it, not that it will be a problem meshing in, but it'll take a little while to mesh. Because those guys, they don't know her like you think they know her. She's still an outsider coming in and new to, to the bench. Mm -hmm. So in my, in my opinion, it'll take a little while for her to get to know those guys and vice versa. Right. Well, I, I think she had a point in her press conference. I was in the conference call when she, when she first got hired that first day. And she did say, you know, physically, men and women will never be able to play on the same level. She says men are just, you know, su superior in terms of strength and in terms of speed. But she says, you know, in the mind game, that's, that's a totally different aspect. And as, and I, uh, as you said, Paul, you know, they're, there, it's going to be a different kind of approach being in that locker room, but I think she has some familiarity. I asked her if she had received any news from any, any of the players, you know, when she had got hired, and she said, you know, she's very close to Tony Parker, so she's in kind of with the veterans. She kind of knows, you know, I, I think she'll know like guys like Tony, Tony Tim, Manu, and they're going to keep, you know, the young guys. Well, well her, her and Duncan have actually participated in the All Star festivities, yes, and you with, know, with the, David uh, Robinson too. With David so. Robinson too, so she, she's familiar with the guys. Yeah, and, and like she's also mentioned before, um, you know. She's always had a male coach most of her career in the, in the WMA. There's never been like a, a, um, you know, any kind of mm -hmm. uh, you know, r r wild issue that's ever right. happened in the locker room or anything yeah. like that. So. But you got to remember, too, though, guys, that uh, there's, a, there's, there's a line between being friends and being mm -hmm. a boss. Yeah. 
So once she steps on the court, she, she can't be your friend. She's going to be a boss. Yeah. It depends how those guys take that, too. Right. What, I, I what, wouldn't it be it? interesting, Stephen, if, if Pop were to get tossed <laughs> you know, in a game and they, you know, they need somebody to come in and she steps in? That would be interesting. That would be. But yeah. uh, getting back to the, lo the locker room issue, I, I don't think it's going to be an issue at all because I had the pleasure of meeting Robin Roberts when she was here in San Antonio. She w did an interview with Becky. And what happened was, was that she asked her that specific question what's going to happen in the locker room. Becky said exactly what you said, Paul. It's not going to be an issue. She said, I've been coached by men my entire career, my, most of my WNBA career and my college career also, right. coached by men. She said, she said, they never walked in on me, and I don't expect to walk in on them. She right. said, it won't be an issue. So right. I don't think it's going to be a problem. As for the friend thing you mentioned, yeah. you're, you're right. There is a fine line between friend and coach. And um, she is, like I said, very good mindset right. with basketball, and it's going to be the thing where she knows where it's, that line is. All right, good. Paul, you want good. the final word on this topic here? Oh, I was just going to say, too, that uh, a team that wins can take chances like the Spurs are doing with her. A team that's losing cannot right. afford no. to have someone mm -hmm. like her right. on, on their bench. Well, you know, uh, speaking of uh, just issues in general, uh, one of the big issues that popped up in this offseason was been the injury to Paul George of the Pacers. You know, everybody saw that it was gruesome. Uh, yeah, if you're, you're not squeamish, go look it up and check it out. But, no, there are a couple of Spurs playing right now, well, in an exhibition play, as uh, FIBA 2014 World Cup kicks off later this month. Tiago Splitter, Boris Diaw, and Aaron Bays, each playing for their respective home countries. Uh, is this an issue? Should be worried about uh, these three guys? Mm -hmm. You know, got a restricted free agent and two locks on the roster. Risking that injury, especially to a guy like Boris Diaw. Yeah. I've been against pros playing in the in the Olympics for years, I was fortunate enough to be with Portland, the Blazers, back in the early '90s when we had the Tournament of the Americas. I got to call all the Dream Team games, okay, mm -hmm. and that was fantastic. They were unbeatable, never lost a game. But ever after that, I think they proved the point. Pros in the in the uh, Olympics are not necessary anymore. Give the lower guys a chance because this things like this happen, and you're done for. Oh yeah, no, definitely. But you know, here's the thing, though, you know, Paul. If, you, if DL goes down for some injury mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in, the, in the tournament, he's, he was pretty important for the Spurs down the stretch. Very. Yeah. Yes, very, very much. But, you know, it's just, it's just the chance you've got to take right now. You know, even Paul George, you know, as, as gruesome as that injury was, he already says, I want to come back in 2016 and play for the Olympics. You know, it's, it's something, um, DL, you know, he's, he's up there in age. I think he's 30, 31, mm -hmm. 32 years old. So he's obviously a, a bigger case. But, you know, he, he's, even though he is one of their core members, he's obviously, you know, if, if the injury did happen right now in August, you know, he would have the whole season kind of to, to get back on the field. But, you know, obviously, it, it was a gruesome injury, one, one that doesn't necessarily happen all the time. You know, a guy like Manu Ginobili has had history of, a history of injury. So I think you, for a manager perspective, you kind of got to look at their age and, and, and the case of, of, right. of which kind of scenarios. But I just think, you know, it's going to be really hard for the NBA to, to, to take these guys out of playing for the yeah. pros, especially maybe the Americans, it might be a little bit easier because they have more control. But for, the, for the, like guys like Dia for Splitter, for Brazil, you know, France, yeah. it's a little bit harder. This is what they really invest in. You saw a happy Tony Parker and Boris were last year when yeah. they won the, the Eurobasket for the first time. Mm -hmm. So that should be it. I mean, they already put the point. Right. Yeah. They, they, they yeah. served the country well. Thanks, guys. You've done well. You have a job, you have a career, you have a family to take care of. You know, you're done here. Get the other guy because if they don't, they'll keep using up spots every single year. Mm -hmm. Spots for guys that are, are, are be as good as them right. or even better. Well, you know, we've got one roster spot open. We we're talking about Baines a little while ago playing for the team Australia. But there hasn't been too much movement. There are reports that other European teams are interested in him. But the Spurs look like they might be leaving that 14th spot open. Yes, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of what the Spurs have, have been doing in the past. You know, going into the season with 14, with 14 men, you can actually, you know, if somebody gets hurt, like they had numerous injuries. I think it, only Jeff Ayers and uh, Corey Joseph stayed healthy last year. So, you know, the, if, you, if somebody gets hurt, you can bring somebody in from the D-League. Uh, you know, a few years ago, Boris Diaw, he right. got bought out by the Charlotte Bobcats in February, so they actually had a spot left open to bring that in. I just think, you know, Aaron Baines is a plus. He had some some, some magnificent moments right. against Portland Trailblazers in that series. But overall, he's kind of he kind of does. Right. He fits in the category of Tiago Splitter, well, yeah. of Jeff Ayers. You know, he well, doesn't bring a lot. Well, well Stephen and, and, and Paul, y'all were you know, before we were recording. Y'all were pretty adamant, like just yeah. give the roster spot to Aaron. You know, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it does. He's been here. He knows the system. He knows everything about the Spurs. And you bring someone else, even if it's uh, another pro from another team that's being cut out, cut or well, whatever. He's here. He knows the system. Why would you not? Already hiring, right, right, and he has. But some it's good, just my opinion. I mean, yeah. Well, he has some mm -hmm. good uh, performances during the regular he season. He does. I mean, he has sh uh, sh shown shine. However you want to say. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's done all that. I mean, we, like Paul said, the Portland series, he did very well. But one thing I want to touch what Paul said, which is the system. Everybody said it's hard to learn the Spurs system. Marco Bellinelli said it's tough to learn the Spurs system. Right. 
and it is at least a takes, year. At least, at least a, year. a year, yeah. And so hopefully my next year marker will get. I think he will. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I, with I, Baines, I he don't, knows yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think it'll be too much of a loss though if they lose him. I, I think I think, I think it it's would. smart. I think it's prudent. I mean, they got they got the size, yeah. they got the team, the core, the the bigger names are back. Well, there's always the Toros. Yeah, there's always that. <laughs> yeah. so, Paul, final word? Put him there. I just I mean, really, we're arguing about the 15th spot here. And that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's the case of this team is that they have their top nine guys that's and they're going to go into the playoffs. And so, really, whether it's Baines, whether it's you know, a guy like Bryce Cotton, mm-hmm. these guys, in the end, they're not going right. to bring a huge impact. They're going right. to be the guys that sit in the suit. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. during that part. Well, it, you know, those are our thoughts right there on the Spurs offseason and especially what to do with that last roster spot. So go out to ProjectSpurs.com and leave your thoughts on that topic as well as all the other topics we've talked about. From Becky Hammond to the FIBA World Cup and if you think it's wise for NBA players to play with their home country as well during the offseason instead of resting. Which we're all glad that Manu's resting, right? Yeah, oh, we're all glad. Okay, we're all glad about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and again, thanks for Paul Castro again for coming on. I've been mm-hmm. asking him for Months and years to come you on. Know, you know what? I'm a busy guy, man. I'm a yeah. busy guy. So uh, you can follow him on Twitter at Paul Castro NBA. But for our guests, Paul Castro, Stephen Anderson, and Paul Garcia, I am Jeff Garcia. Thanks again for watching this episode of the Spurs Roundtable. Who's buying lunch? I think Stephen is. <laughs> is he's right? the rookie Steven? on the. He's rookie on the, on the total. Star season just ended. Stephen so. gets uh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just got paid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>